Okay. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in for another week of our Ask an Expert series. If you are joining us for the first time, my name is Pearl Farkason. I am the owner of Designed by Delcy, as well as the host of Ask Delcy, where we teach you how to create experiences that spark joy. So we've been on our Ask um, an Expert series for a couple of weeks now. And today I am so excited to talk about one of my favorite aspects of uh, event planning and events all together, and that is catering. Specifically, today we are going to spend some time in my hometown of Newport, Rhode Island. And I felt that it was really important for us to focus on Newport, Rhode Island, because it is actually one of the top 10 destinations in the United States to get hitched. So if you're looking for the perfect seaside coastal wedding experience, definitely want to check out Newport, Rhode Island. And what better way to discuss catering and Newport, Rhode Island than inviting my dear friend Shannon Driscoll with Blackstone Caterers onto our Ask an Expert series. So Blackstone Caterers, if you haven't heard of them, oh, you definitely need to know about them. So they're actually recognized as one of the state's best catering companies um, by local um, and national publications, and they have been around since 1945. So you know, all those years, they have a couple of tips, tricks, and planning advice up their sleeves. So Welcome, Shannon. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited to get uh, dressed and, and do my hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that, that's great. It's making me very happy to talk to you. Oh, absolutely. So um, we want to know everything. My goodness. So Blackstone Caterers, I'm a huge fan. Um, but for those Thank viewers you. who have not experienced how wonderful Blackstone Caterers um, is, tell us a little bit about you, yourself, and your team. Sure. Um, well, again, my name's Shannon Driscoll. Um, I'm a senior sales manager with Blackstone, and I've been there about nine years now. It's gone by very fast because we're having fun. Um, so Blackstone, as you mentioned, uh, we were we started in 1945. Um, so we've been around a really long time, one of the top catering companies in Rhode Island. Um, you know, and we we've evolved years we definitely you know over the decades we started up in the blackstone river valley that's how we got our name up in northern rhode island and we came down to the newport area and quinnick island in the 80s um, and really really tried to focus more on social events and weddings so that's primarily what we do about 80 percent weddings um, but we also do corporate events social events we do nonprofits. we do galas um, I mean, our focus really is using, you know, classic American cuisine, really, really seasonally focused. Um, that's one of the first questions we ask, you know, is when, you, you know, what date are you guys getting married? Is it winter? And then I'm like, oh, let's do vegetables and those winter type produce items. Or if it's summer, we love to throw a tomato bar in there and do all that produce available in the summer. So just, you know, taking local cuisine, local service, all of our servers, all of our staff are local um, Probably that's probably sums it up, you know, pretty much uh, well. As um, just as us as a catering company, um, we do venues all around Rhode Island. We go a little bit into Massachusetts, southeastern Mass. We go a little bit into Connecticut, but we kind of keep it like about an hour to an hour and fifteen minute radius um, outside of the Newport area. Wow. So I agree. Local is so important, especially if you're traveling from all over the world to be here in Newport, Rhode Island. You definitely want to experience all of the amazing local produce that uh, that Rhode Island has to offer, and they could get it all through you, right? <laughs> Love. We have a lot of couples who are like, oh, my fiance's family is from Texas. They've never been to Newport or New England. England before and we're like ooh, that's fun let's put tons of you know East Coast things New England items you know specifically Newport items on the menu so their family can get a real taste of like the food in this area wonderful what's your favorite local um, what's your favorite local dish that you love to feature um, it's, it's hard because there's tons, um, but absolutely, I know it, people do see it sometimes a lot, but anything Newport, like the little chowder with the clam cake, 
egg. It's so delicious. We home, we house made all of our chowder, um, but it's so quintessential Newport and it's just adorable. And anything that you can miniaturize and put like in a little cup with a little mini clam cake, people go crazy for. Um, and people who live in Newport, live in Rhode Island, know that people will eat chowder on the hottest day of the year. They'll eat it on the coldest day of the year. It does not matter. Um, but I just think that's really classic Newport. Oh, I totally agree. So Newport um, uh, is known for its beautiful charm and certainly like the Newport mansions. And so I want to um, talk a little bit about um, our, the distinctive venues of Newport and why it's so important to have a, um, a, a caterer that an off-premise caterer that understands the logistics. So can you tell us a little bit more about what is off-premise catering and what separates, what's the difference between that and let's say a restaurant? Yeah, sure. So off-premise catered, I actually came from a hotel before um, I started working at Blackstone. So I know firsthand that it's a very different. Um, off-premise, it's, it's, I would say there's a couple more, you know, not challenges, but there's just a couple more things that you have to kind of juggle. Um, you're dealing with venues that are all different from each other. Like Rosecliff Mansion is very different from a beautiful tent out at Fort Adams on the lawn. You know, they're very different venues. And being an offsite caterer, we have to bring basically a whole kitchen with us. So we bring our catering trucks. Um, some venues have kitchens, some don't. We have to create a kitchen out of a caterer's cook tent. Um, but we're bringing everything from pots and pans and forks and serving spoons. Um, we're bringing sometimes the electricity. If we go out into the middle of a field, we need a generator, we need a water source. Um, so there's a probably, I would say it's just a little more, we have to put more pieces together. If you're at a venue that has a kitchen, has a ballroom, has back of the house space, um, that's already there. But if we go out to a brand new venue, if it's a mansion or if it's a, a tent or if it's someone's private home, um, we just kind of have to put all the pieces together and to kind of recreate a venue out of nothing. Mm. Mm. I, I know that um, many, uh, some of the feedback that I hear from clients and couples who are getting married is, my goodness, well, why is why is off-premise catering so expensive? You probably you've summed it up. Every pot, yeah. every pan, all the electricity. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just a different animal. Um, it's just that, that, you know, I tell if you're in a banquet space, you know, you just go to the kitchen and grab a spoon. When we're in a tent in a field, we have to make sure to bring all of those things with us. We have checklists that we go over and over and over and over. Um, we have to create a kitchen. We have to create a water source, create a power source. Um, so that's kind of sometimes why, you know, offsite catering or off-premise catering can be a little bit more expensive because there's a lot more variables that go into creating that venue. Mm -hmm. well, but well, what, your out, your, what your outcome is, I think sometimes is a little more personalized experience. Mm -hmm. You're a tent, you can make it look how you want it or decorate how you want it. You can really do whatever you want to create that venue. Exactly. So the, um, I guess the, the bend, the upside of it is that um, having your wedding in a non-traditional wedding in a non-traditional venue is that you really get to make the experience your own, right? Yeah, there's no like cookie cutter, even the venues we work at, and none of them I would call, you know, I've never seen the same wedding, even if I'm at Rosecliff every weekend or at Eisenhower weekend or at Tennis Hall of Fame, no wedding looks the same. People set things up differently, different linen, different decor, different food, different bar, you know, a whole different experience at every wedding that I've done over the past nine years, no wedding has been the same, which I think is really, really cool. Oh, yeah. There's just so many different ways to put together the perfect experience. And I, I'm sure that you can agree that our couples are just so creative. So of course, there's going to be definitely different takes on what we used to consider a traditional wedding it just has so much more meaning <laughs> now these days. Exactly. I like when couples bring me an idea I've never done. And at first I'm like, hmm, you know, and I'm like, let's try it. And it comes out fantastic. So I love that. <laughs> all right. So Shannon, um, are all caterers created equal? Um, I would say no, but I don't think they should be. I think everyone is different. And I think everybody has, there's room for all different caterers. Some, you know, niche, they might have their niche. They might just focus on barbecue or just focus on lobster bakes, which is awesome. 
Um, some are a little more casual, some are a little more fine dining. And that's the beauty of it is that there's so many different people in the world and so many different you know, ways that they want to have their wedding, that I think there's room for every caterer in the state or in the area to be there because we all kind of have our niche, all have our focus, um, and it's okay to be different. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Now, Blackstone Caterers is known as a full-service caterer. Can you explain to our viewers what is a full-service caterer and what are some of the benefits of working with a full-service caterer? Sure. Yeah, so full service just kind of means um, that we obviously do the food. Um, so we're and we're cooking the food on site. Again, like I said, sometimes we have to create a kitchen or some venues have a kitchen, but we're there. So we we're cooking, we're creating the food right there. Um, we also handle the bar. So we have a class P liquor license. We're fully insured. All of our bartenders are tip certified. So we bar as well. We do the service, which means all of the servers, all of the bartenders, the chefs, the stewards, the event managers running the event, they're all Blackstone owned and trained. So we do the food, the bar, the service. We also help, um, you know, procuring a tent, tables, chairs, linens. We bring in the china glass and silver. Um, so we're really bringing in everything. And then also in the planning leading up to the wedding, we're working on floor plan, we're working on timeline, we're working on, you know, little decor pieces of where you want your place card, guest book set up. Um, so we're, we're kind of, you know, acting as, you know, we're not wedding planners at all. Uh, we love wedding planners, but we're kind of just acting as to get all the aspects of catering and to get that all under one company. So it's a little easier for the bride and groom to deal with. And we're just kind of facilitating everything, you know, encompassing food, beverage, service, staff, you know, a little bit of linen decor, tables, tents, um, you know, trying to help in any way we can, just so it's a little more seamless. Mm -hmm. So you, um, so so essentially it's so much it's so convenient <laughs> it's essentially if you're investing 50 percent of your budget into catering uh you know it's it, it's definitely full service catering serves as a huge convenience factor to be working with someone to really put all the pieces of together for your wedding I think it, it helps the couple a lot because they're brand new at this. Um, they don't know what they're doing. There's, it's a lot of information. It's sometimes it can be overwhelming and for them to think like, okay, I'm going to get my food from one company. Then I need to hire a bar service and then I need to hire another service to help me get linens and then another. And so it's a lot. So we're there to, you know, help in any way we can using our, you know, experience and our expertise and just trying to help them put all that together. So they feel, you know, happy and not stressed out. <laughs> Absolutely. So Shannon, you also mentioned something. Uh, you had mentioned that um, you're, as a full service caterer, you handle many aspects, but you're not a wedding planner. A lot of times what I find is that couples think that working with a full service caterer, they don't need a wedding planner. Can you tell us a little bit about what are some of the differences and um, how a wedding planner can, why having a um, a full service caterer and a wedding planner can work to, um, to, to, to enhance your day and the experience. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, start out by saying we have student planners. If someone asks if they should hire one, I say yes. Um, they, you know, their wedding planners are there. They're, they're handling everything. They're handling transportation. They're helping you get your invitations out. They're keeping everything organized for you. They're handling logistics of you getting your hair and makeup done. They're, they do so much behind the scenes that it does it, we don't, as a caterer, we wouldn't even scratch the surface of that organization level that they have. Um, you know, especially if you're at a private home or somewhere that tent planners are key, you know, bringing in restroom trailers, getting the generator, going on site visits, organizing all of these vendors, your florist, your DJ, your caterer, your uh, videographer, getting us all on the same page, getting the information right to have one person, you know, handling the information as like your point of contact um, and making sure all the, you know, T's are crossed, the I's are dotted. Um, so they're doing a lot. They're doing a lot, a lot that as a caterer, we just couldn't do. You know, we, we can't help you with your hair and makeup and your transportation and working with other vendors and doing, you know, you know, all of your spreadsheets and all of that. They're just, they're key to kind of being, you know, the person who is going to bring every detail about the wedding, not just catering. I mean, we're, you know, focusing on catering and the food and we will definitely help get 
tents and tables and help you with that because just because we're so used to doing that. But the wedding planner is going to be that main focus person who has every single detail under control for the couple. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, I love them. <laughs> well, we love full service caterers too. <laughs> Um, so what factors, <laughs> I know we need all hands on deck. We are all a team. You know, it's, um, there's no I in when it comes to team and weddings and yeah. making your day perfect. Every, every detail is so necessary and yeah. the, the team um, is so important for sure. Exactly. So what factors um, should you consider to determine if a caterer is right for you? Sure. Well, kind of like what I was saying a little bit earlier, we all kind of have our different styles. Some couples, you know, want that niche caterer who does the barbecue or does the lobster bake and, you know, to seek a caterer out, you know, that does that. That's perfect. That's more of their style. So I would say, you know, reach out to a couple caterers, get a sense of what their style is, what their, you know, their types of foods are, you know, you might want something specific, you might want classic American and seasonal. Um, I also think it's, you know, budget, of course, is in there too as well. We don't want to forget that. Um, but I also think it's really important um, is to have a good relationship with all these vendors that you're working with. You are going to be working with these vendors sometimes two years, um, you know, usually about a year, but I've had some clients that have booked, you know, their venue two years in advance. And you want to have a good relationship with that person. You want to feel comfortable. You want that person, you know, to know that you guys are on the same page, to be flexible, to be able to work well together. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of factors, the food, their style of service, um, price, of course, and just the overall like feeling and relationship you're getting from that vendor, which, you know, which helps because you will be with them for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree. Now, um, you mentioned budget as well, too. Can you tell us what would you suggest uh, for a full service caterer? What percentage of your budget would you suggest allocating towards uh, working with a full service caterer? So that would be your bar, your food, your staffing, um, and any related fees. Yeah, so the catering is definitely, is the biggest part of your budget. It, it really is um, because it encompasses so much. Um, I don't think I know exactly from a percentage standpoint, um, but it's definitely the biggest chunk. If it was a pie, we're the biggest chunk out of it. You know, their venue, the florist is, is super important. The DJ or band is super important, photo, photography. Um, but your catering, it's, it's not only the food, you know, over the course of the five or six the bar for five or six hours it's the staff as I said you know we bring in the china the glass um the linens so it's definitely a big chunk of your budget but it's it's definitely worth it as well it's something that you're going to invest in you know if you want to have wedding where you know food is a focus I think it's absolutely worth it to spend you know a good majority a good 60 percent of your budget on your catering mm -hmm. And I always say uh, to my clients or any um, anyone who I'm speaking with, as far as uh, events are concerned, your catering it's it's like the belly. If you're if you're thinking about uh, your wedding or an event as a whole body, it is essentially the the belly, the heartbeat of yeah. your event. So it's so important to have that foundation because. Yeah everything else it's going to set the tempo this it's going to you know the food the service there's so much that yes. is in, entwined into the catering especially when you're um you're hosting an event in a non-traditional venue that yes. specific component is so essential to invest in because no matter how great the flowers look which is so essential and the yeah. music which is so essential everything's essential yeah. <laughs> but if that foundation isn't there to set the tone and the tempo yeah the the pieces are are, are going to be harder to to think together yeah, you're exactly right. And what you just brought up about timeline, um, that's so important to us. Um, you know, we're going to work with a couple to make sure we have a timeline of the event, because most importantly to us, we want to make sure the food comes out perfect. So we work on, you know, formalities and speeches and how long those speeches are and how many dances. So we work on all those really, really fine details to kind of to the minute. So then we know, you know, 
food and temperature and all that and when we're going to fire things. So that's super important. Um, like you said, that we're kind of there to kind of oversee timing and flow um, right from the very beginning. Absolutely. Absolutely. And in addition to, <clears throat> to food, which is certainly a huge component, staffing is so essential as well, too. Yes, yep, it is staff. We think sometimes we think sometimes people forget about <laughs> Oh no, you we need a lot of people. Sometimes you don't or the couples don't realize how many people it takes to execute this two hundred person wedding. And when I tell them how many servers, how many bartenders, how many chefs, they're sometimes they're a little um taken aback by how many people are gonna be there. Um, but there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Um that's why we love to have our same staff year after year. Um, we keep, they're all local. We try to get everybody to come back year after year. A lot of them um, are younger kids who are in college, but again, they, they learn. We have people who have been with us for 25 years and they started in college and they just keep coming back every season. Or we have teachers who have the summers off and they're, you know, they're all summer working for us. And it's like, you know, we train them, we keep them, we show them the right way to do things, the right ways of service. Um, and they're there, they're there, you know, behind the scenes doing things that some times the guests don't even realize they're doing or how did that napkin appear I thought I dropped it you know it's because your server saw you they got a new napkin and they placed it on your table like little things like that um, but service is really important you want to make sure you have enough servers for cocktail hour for passing the hors d'oeuvres passing the drinks clearing you know you don't want to see little you know glassware and cocktail napkins we want to have people clearing that then you need more servers that are you know pouring water in the tent and lighting candles and you know pouring champagne then you need your kitchen staff so there's a lot there's a lot that goes into it and service is so important um, we've even been asked different ways to serve you know dinner um, where we sweep the whole room and do synchronized service which is super cool um, we do that sometimes too but like um, but service is really a big part of catering that sometimes I think gets overlooked but it's so but I think that's actually a really cool thing about service if you don't notice that things are magically happening in front of you, then that's like ideal. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. I, and it, it adds to the whole experience, <laughs> which I love. Yep. We also tell the servers like, be friendly. You know, you can talk, talk to guests, ask if they're having a good time. Like, you know, like be friendly, be interactive. One of our big things that we love is that at every guest table, when the guests sit for dinner, the lead server on that team will go up to the table and say, oh, hi, I'm Shannon. I'm going to be, you know, helping you guys today. So that we love for them to introduce to the table, you know, their name. And so then you know, the table can get used to them and they can ask them if they, you know, need another fork or if they need something, but we'd love to have the servers, you know, just be real and friendly and interactive to all the guests. Oh, that's uh, lovely. My goodness. I just, I just want to be a guest at a black event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to be a guest. <laughs> yeah. So can you, um, so you spoke um, a little bit about the term that's called staffing ratio. So for those of us who are watching that aren't, um, familiar with the term. Can you explain a little bit about what that is? And then what, what's the typical industry standard and uh, how, and why is that important? Yeah, I've always kind of just um, known that it's usually one server per every 15 guests for a served meal. Um, we sometimes like to do one for every 10 guests for served meal um if you have buffet style or if you have buffet style hors d'oeuvres if you have if nothing is being passed i think you can bring that down a little bit um but again service is so important to us and it really depends on the wedding if you have five six cocktail food stations going on and past hors d'oeuvres then you have a you know a six course plated beautiful dinner we need to you know pack the staff on that event so then it might be one for every eight guests or one for every six guests because we need so many many more people so we kind of look at every wedding a little bit differently and kind of look at their menu look at the logistics see how many servers we really need to get the job done you know in the best way um but we usually you know for the just for the average it's usually one server per every 10 guests at most of our plated dinner weddings mm. I see. And then the one thing that you've had mentioned that I, I didn't know this until today, but something I so appreciate is that you act, your team actually strives to keep and retain the same staff. Now, with catering being such a seasonal thing, um, it's very common in our industry that there's a high turnover rate just naturally because of the type of industry that we're in. But there's just so many benefits to having a team that 
has worked together for many years. It's almost like, um, it's, it's like, uh, when you're, when you're, yeah, yeah, they, they, they know how to, um, they know how to drive the car together. You, it, there's just certain things that you don't have to train them and get them on board with certain things, which in a, in a huge larger perspective, they're essentially not training on an event. <laughs> exactly. And we, we, we love, you know, of course people move away or, you know, they get married and have babies and they don't want to work in the summer anymore. And that makes us really sad because we love all of our staff, but we try our very hardest to keep the same people. And again, we, like I said, we've had people for 20, 25 years, the same staff. And we also try to send them to the same venues, which we think is super helpful. If we can send the same event manager, the same chefs, a good amount of the same servers and weights staff to Rosecliff every weekend and then another group to the Glen Manor house every weekend then they get to know the venue like the back of their hands they know exactly where you know outlets are and they know where things are located and then they know that like oh go in this door this one's you know they just get to know the venue um so we think it's really really important and again they they don't have to be you know we do trainings every year of course and refresher courses but they all get to know like the Blackstone way. So it's not, you know, reinventing the wheel every year. It's the same people that were like, oh, good to see you again this year. And then everyone just jumps back in and they just know what they're doing, which is fantastic. Oh, I completely agree. <laughs> so let's segue a little bit. Um, and I'd love to spend some time talking about some tips and trends specifically for couples who uh, are in the wedding planning process and just thinking about how to make their um, their day special. And so we have couples from all over the country and many parts of the world watching this. So um, tell us, uh, Shannon, how would you determine what style of menu is ideal for you? For example, if a couple is thinking about a plated versus a buffet versus a family style, what advice would you suggest? Yeah, well, we always start any of our, you know, before we send out a menu proposal, we, we try as hard as we can to get the couple or to get at least, you know, one of the, the bride or the groom or the bride to the grooms, we try to get at least someone on the phone to kind of have a conversation to hear what they're looking for. Um, and most people do. Most people know, you know, right off the bat, I want a really casual vibe, you know, and we're like, all right, cool, let's maybe do some food stations where people can be up and down and mingling. Um, or then we get another couple who wants everything to be really, really formal. And we're like, okay, beautiful. We'll do a nice, beautiful three course plated dinner. Um, so we kind of get a sense of what they're looking for, um, styles of food, um, like, and kind of what you were mentioning people from all around the world. That's one of my favorite things I like to do is that in, to incorporate, you know, some personal, um, we have a lot of menus that are just our chef's ideas, but I'm tell all couples like let me know what you like. You know, if you, if your fiance is from France, you know, let's bring in some French influences, which are really cool. Or if you guys got engaged in Mexico, let's do a cool margarita for the cocktail hour. Um, so I absolutely love like hearing from them, hearing their stories, hearing their backgrounds, and then we can start putting that into the menu. Um, and they, and they kind of know, you know, I'm more casual, I'm more formal. And then you get, you know, the couples who, you know, kind of think like, I want to see the dinner, but I want it to be different. So that's kind of where family style will come in, which a lot of people love because they get that sense of home, like your home eating dinner together and you can pass platters around and people can really be interacting without getting up and doing like a stationed style wedding. So family style is a super cool kind of hybrid of, you know, a little more casual, but, you know, getting variety of foods in there and getting people like interacting with each other. Oh, great. So I, I, the one thing that you had mentioned was that you always try to um, get the couple on the phone. So f I, I, I do agree that there's something to, certainly there's convenience <clears throat> about emails, but that initial conversation, there's just so much that can be assessed through a call that might be challenging to write and get the vibe all in email. So, so do you suggest that it's better to have that initial conversation via phone such as like so you have to call the case yeah. mm -hmm. i i love it but i i mean i love talking to people on the phone because you really can get 
tons more information than you can in an email. Um, but sometimes people are busy. I get it. They're, they're, you know, they're working all the, all week and they have families and children and they just want to send a real quick email. Um, if they send an email that they're just looking for like general ideas, then I'm more than happy to put a beautiful seasonal proposal. If they said I'm getting married and you know, this, this Saturday in July next year, I'll go, okay, cool. I'll do a really yummy summer menu with lots of summer options um, just to get them started and then they usually write back with a little bit of feedback and then I can revise it and tweak it and make it more what they were looking for um, so ideally I do love a phone call just to because a lot of those like details that they didn't even know they wanted in their wedding will come out in a conversation um, but we totally get how busy everyone is so we can definitely just send some sample menus just to get everyone going get the ideas you know started um, and then we can go from there and revise it you know sometimes 10 15 whatever time it needs to be revised yeah and the one thing I say is um it's 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 interesting to see how uh the vision evolves over the course of a year or two years it might start as one thing but I think that it's so important to have flexibility and an open mind uh as you're speaking with your vendors and such as your caterer your florist that um, and, and it's really a partnership collaboration. And I'm yeah. glad that you, that you take that approach. Yeah. We've had a couple of couples say, can your chefs think of some cool new ideas? And we're like, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's fantastic. And they look to the chef just to kind of give their, you know, new recommendations or, you know, something brand new. Um, if it has like an international twist on it, or if they just want, you know, something cool and creative. Um, we've done that a lot too. And then, um, what's also really cool too, is that, a lot of people, you know, they don't know what they're going to end up choosing. They see all this beautiful food on, you know, on a menu and they go, I don't know what I'm going to choose. And I tell them, that's okay. We have a year and a half. We can do, we do food tastings where they really try everything um, right in our um, commissary. Um, and that's when they can really start deciding like, okay, I like this salad, but I want the dressing of that salad. And I want the cheese of that salad. I'm going to create my own salad. And we're like, yeah, that sounds fantastic. So they could get to, they get to taste everything and then kind of, they can create their own entrees, create their own salads and create their own, like, you know, perfect wedding menu. Mm -hmm. So tastings <laughs> are very important. Okay. So that's a, that's a, that's another good tip for sure. I'm, I'm writing down my tips here too. <laughs> yeah. Every, again, like kind of like the same thing when you go into a restaurant, you're like, oh my goodness, all this food looks delicious, um, which it is. Everything is great. Um, but at the tasting, we try a variety of hors d'oeuvres, of salads, of entrees. And about half the time, people create their own custom entree because they like different aspects of different ones. And we think that's fantastic. And we're cooking on site and plating on site. So it's really easy to do, you know, exactly what the couple wants. Mm, I see. Now, um, how, how would you suggest um, couples navigate allergies uh, for their guests? Yeah, allergies um, used to be uh, years ago. I think everyone was a little scared of allergies, but uh, they've come a little more prevalent and we've gotten, you know, a little bit better at taking care of them. Um, I usually tell the couples, I mean, when you're doing, if it's a plate of dinner with entree choices, just start like a spreadsheet or start something to keep track of, you know, filet in one column, chicken in one column and do an allergy column and write, you know, you know, exactly she is. If your guests say I'm, I'm soy free or lactose or I'm gluten, I'm celiac, um, I'm allergic to strawberries. You can be allergic to anything. Just write what they write or write what they tell you. And then, you know, then I take that to our chefs and we cross reference everything, the salad, the entree, we make sure to tweak, tweak it for that, for that guest. And we'll know what table they're at. We know exactly where they're sitting. Um, we also are going to prepare their food, you know, different if it's, you know, an allergy, you know, like, like celiac nothing is going to be touching that entree. It's going to be prepared separately. The sides are going to be different, you know, the starches. Um, so there's no cross contamination. Um, so allergies, we kind of have down now. Allergies we're good with. So no one has to be worried about those, that we know how to handle those. Um, the chefs take the, you know, the right precautions in the kitchen. And I kind of just tell a couple, let us do the work. Like you don't have to think of what entree they could eat. Just write their allergy and I will do the work for you. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, well, can we change this and this and this? I'm like, I'll handle it. Don't worry. <laughs> Great. And then, so when do you suggest that couples give you that list of allergies along with the guest count? How soon do you need that information? We only need that two weeks before the wedding. 
So at that point, because most people will have their all their RSVPs back about a month before, unless you have to like track down any stragglers. Um, so they'll they usually will have it. And if it's they do it in a spreadsheet or do it in some sort of document, they can just email it right over to us. So we'd love to have it two weeks before because that's when we start um, doing our provision orders, our food orders about two weeks before the wedding. Um, so that would be ideal. And then, so what happens? <laughs> so as you know, it's like uh, um, two weeks before the wedding, it's like musical RSVPs. Some people yeah. can attend, some people can't, and there's tons of provisions. What, how do you handle that? Yeah, it, it does. It happens all the time. And the, the brides write me an email. They're like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, it's okay. It happens every day. <laughs> so changes are absolutely not a problem. Um, we have done many, you know, adding of entrees, deleting of entrees, moving people around. If, if, you know, someone who didn't think they could come to the wedding, now they can come. That's fantastic. You know, then we, we work on adding their entree. We also work on adding, you know, a seat at which table they're going to fit at. Um, so it happens. It's the nature of life. Things change. Um, I just tell the couples, don't worry about it. Send it over to me, please. Um, it's a, usually it's in a frantic email and I'm like, don't worry. Um, and we just take care of it. There's, there's all, we can all, always order more, more food. Wonderful. And then, so what are some new trends that you're seeing in the catering industry now? Trends, which I'm kind of seeing, and um, I know we'll talk a little bit later about, you know, the state of our industry right now, but I think people are kind of understanding that they don't have to have a gigantic, you know, 250 person wedding. They can have a more intimate wedding. An intimate doesn't have to be you know, 20 people. It could be 100 and, and under. Um, but just to make it a little more special and a little more personalized for their guests, which I think is a really cool thing to do. Uh, maybe more wine pairings with dinner as a nice touch. Maybe, you know, um, do a dessert bar with the couple's favorite, you know, personal desserts. Maybe do a cocktail hour with like lots of different food stations. So I think they're just kind of, you know, doing a smaller guest count, but just, you know, kind of upping the, um, you know, the overall experience of that, you know, with making it a little more personable, adding the wine service, doing some cocktail food station, maybe treating the guests and doing like a nice lobster and bow for dinner to be like a little, ooh, like, you know, as like a nicer touch for them. Um, so I think that might, might kind of continue in our industry, depending on where we go, is just to make a smaller wedding, you know, with a couple more special touches. Um, but other trends, people are still loving like their fun donuts for dessert and they're still loving like kind of like outside of the box funky things like waffle bars, donut bars, ice cream sundae bars. Desserts like are a whole new animal. People just love it. They love to go crazy with dessert, which I think is really cool. Um, so we're still definitely seeing that. Um, food trucks are still kind of around. People might bring one in uh, for like a late night snack. Um, that's still kind of cool. Um, that's probably about all that I'm seeing right now, um, like little trends here and there. But overall, I think people are just, you know, looking just to make the overall food and beverage experience, you know, just more special. Like I said, with those personal touches, with their things that remind them about the couple, their own spin on things um, and making the food kind of, you know, the highlight of the evening. Oh, it sounds so great. Um, I'm, I'm sold at the donut bar. <laughs> <laughs> donuts, donuts are not going away. I mean, cupcakes kind of went away, but donuts aren't going away. People, they just, they're, they're delicious. They, yeah. they absolutely are. It's like you, it, it just puts a whole new spin on like the, the meaning of desserts. It's, I feel like dessert, desserts are my favorite food group, so I can yeah. go on and on about it forever. <laughs> Before they start with, well, this is what I want for dessert. I'm like, okay. You know, they'll start at the, like the end of the night, which is totally fine. And they want a chocolate bar and dessert and this and that. And I'm like, that sounds amazing. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So as um, a larger company, uh, what are some ways that you incorporate sustainability practices into, uh, into uh, your operation? Yeah. Well, we, all of our, the vendors that we source our food from, they're all sustainable companies. Um, we love Farm Fresh, Rhode Island. We love local companies, um, for, especially for the produce. We're getting, we're getting it from Rhode Island, from companies that, you know, sustainably farm, sustainably fish in the local waters. That's one of my main things is our, you know, fish that we use year round. We'll, tell the bride and groom what is locally found in the waters, you know, like they might want Chilean sea bass. I'm like, well, why don't we do, you know, Atlantic 
bass that's available in the summer, you know, so we try to guide them to use local products use, you know, and then we're getting all these local products from local fishermen. And farm. Um, we also have a compost garden at Blackstone too. We're hoping to make it bigger. Um, but we have that which we throw, you know, we throw a lot of stuff in there to help, you know, the environment. We have a little herb garden in the back as well. Um, so we, you know, of course, recycle, of course, at every event and at Blackstone, um, throw things away properly, dispose of things properly. Um, you know, and we're always looking to, and I'm sure that there's going to be, you know, even more, you know, new practices that come about, which we're always very interested to learn about, but we're trying our best, you know, to, to like, keep things sustainable, be good to the environment, um, you know, all of the above. Oh, that's, I, I know that uh, sustainability is so important now more than ever. So all of these, um, all of these practices that you're implementing. Um, and I also suggest too, for those who are watching in other states or um, across the globe, that these are all, um, all of this advice that Shannon's giving, I do encourage you wherever you do live or wherever you just are designed to have your wedding, these are all questions that you can go back to possible caters, caterers that you want to interview and see you know, things that are really important to you. If sustainability is important to you, ask these questions. Where do you get your food from? What practice, what are some things that you're practicing um, in order to implement sustainability strategies? So this has been so helpful. Sure, it is, it's important. That's a great, that's a great point that we want the couples to be able to, you know, be on the same wavelength as, as us and the caterers and other vendors. Great. So as, um, as we all know, at the time of this recording, it is the end of April, beginning of May in 2020, and the world is currently facing um, a pandemic. And um, with COVID-19, certainly there have been uh, you know, very significant changes to the world of events and catering, but this, I, we do anticipate that um, it will definitely have some impact uh, for quite some time, but no worries. That's why we are experts and that's why we're here asking an expert <laughs> on ways to navigate it. So um, I'd love to spend a little bit of time talking about um, COVID-19 and how to navigate that. So um, Shannon, in your professional opinion, how do you think that this situation will impact weddings? Well, I mean, it already has. Um, for sure, we've um, we've moved obviously all of our April, our May, our June, and our July weddings um, in successfully, which we're really really happy about that. All of the brides and grooms and, couple, and couples they still want to get married. We just have to do it, you know, later in the year or next year. So we've we've um, moved all of those weddings, um, and most importantly, we have to look for and follow the guidelines. We have to. I watch the press conference um, with the governor every day just to hear some more updates. Um, and yesterday she gave a really important one for the event industry, which is helping us navigate. Before that, everyone was a little uncertain and we just kind of were going day by day. Um, so we do have a little more guidance of when we may be able to do, you know, events 50 people and under, which is helpful. So people are either, I mean, you can either downsize your wedding a little bit and, you know, have a more intimate wedding or we can continue to push it um, which we're doing, we just we just keep pushing uh, and postponing weddings for our couples. You know, we are doing it in the winter and doing it next year, and we just basically move their date, um, and there's no other charges associated with that, which we're really trying to help them and be flexible. I think, I think we definitely just have to keep um, educated, keep watching, and we have to look for the governor's, you know, guidelines. I mean, she's doing her best and her best research with all the different industries, food, food industry related as well, um, to know when we are going to open back up again. She gave us a little hope that we might be able to do um, larger than 50 people this August and this September, which is really, really good for us. Um, so I think, you know, we, I think we just have to keep waiting um, to kind of see and go from her, um, you know, her recommendations, but we're trying had to have the, the wedding couples, you know, not worry, not freak out. We can still have this beautiful party. We just might be able to do it a little bit later in the year. Um, and we're also going to work on new practices because I know that the you know governor is going to issue new health guidelines, um, sanitizing stations, um, everyone wearing gloves, which we do in the kitchen anyway, but maybe the servers are all wearing gloves as well. If they want us to wear masks, we're going to follow those guidelines. We were thinking of getting some cute monogrammed Blackstone masks. 
Um, so just following those guidelines, less people at the table, maybe four to five people instead of 10 people. Um, so we're definitely gonna, you know, take all the precautions needed just to make sure the guests have a really safe wedding. Um, so everyone is happy and safe. Um, but I think it's just, I think it's a little more, little more waiting to see what the rest of the year is going to look like, which is scary, but we're going to be, you know, stay positive about it. Mm. Well, thank you so much for that. And you've, you've definitely have given, in addition to, uh, you know, advice for those who will be traveling to Rhode Island uh, and Newport to get married. In addition, just some practices that perhaps our viewers can go back to their caterers and say, well, these are some practices practices that Blackstone Caterers um, is implementing, would it be possible to do these things as well too? So um, please keep us updated and post, posted about any uh, new, new strategies that develop. I would love to share it with our viewers. These are all really helpful and really great uh, tips. Thank you. Welcome. Perfect. So Shannon, um, I would like to know where is your favorite place to get married in Newport, Rhode Island? It's so hard because they're all so pretty. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I love, 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 love Rosecliff. That's your fairy tale wedding. That's, you know, it's beautiful. It's a mansion. It's gorgeous. It's breathtaking. Um, so I love Rosecliff, but I also love, love, love um, Eisenhower House. It's one of my favorite places that sometimes people don't know that you can even have a wedding there um, right on the lawn. It overlooks Narragansett Bay. It, Amazing. Um, and you can tented wedding, you can do it however you want and make it your own. So I think those are my two my two favorites. Oh, wonderful. Favorite cocktail. Um, I love anything with ginger beer. I'm a huge ginger beer person. Um, so anything with that, you know, gingery zing, um, Moscow mules are really fun, or even your ginger beer, vodka and cranberry is really fun. I love that ginger taste. Mm. Favorite wedding song? Um, okay, I know it's been done a million times, but I love No Mars, <laughs> um, the Marry You, the really upbeat song. Um, I hear so many slow songs that his, his is just so fun, and, and when it comes on, I, I want to start dancing around. It's super fun and happy. <laughs> and favorite dish of all time? Favorite dish, I'm going to do a pick a Blackstone dish because why not? It's delicious. Um, our short ribs, it's more of a winter dish, but I swear I could sit on my couch and eat our bowl of short ribs um, with crispy onions and potato puree and just be a happy, happy girl. It's delicious. Uh, oh, short ribs sounds so wonderful for a day like today. <laughs> it's really cold. I could eat like five bowls of them. <laughs> <laughs> And above all, uh, advice for couples on their wedding day or through the wedding planning process. I think I just, I like to tell all couples, just be in the moment at your wedding. That's why you hire these, these vendors who know what they're doing, who are gonna help you stay on schedule and, and keep things organized. Just be in the moment, be really happy, be around your family, be in love. Don't, don't forget you're doing this because you're so in love and you wanna you know, have this beautiful experience with your family and your friends. Um, to don't, don't get stressed out. Don't think about what time it is. Just be in the moment, be happy, and just be thankful that you, you know, are spending this day with this person you're gonna be with forever and just really have fun. Have time. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank Shannon. It's been, an it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add that we didn't discuss? Um, I think just small tips if anybody wants to reach out to Blackstone. I know this is kind of a weird time since we're all working from home, um, but our, you can call our number. It actually gets forwarded to our cell phone, so you can still call our number. Um, you can go on our website. You can fill out an on inquiry form. You can email us. Um, you know, even if you don't even have a venue yet, even if people who aren't even engaged yet and they just want to kind of like pick our brains. So give us a call, email, whatever you want to do. We're here to help you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks. <laughs> Great. All right, everyone. Well, there you have it. 
all that you'll need catering 101 for your next big soiree. So we'll also be providing information on where to find Shannon Driscoll and her team at Blackstone Caterers. Shannon, thank you so much thank for you. your time. It's been such a pleasure. And until next week, guys, take care and we'll see you soon.